Hi, my name is Kate Shin and I am an occupational therapist and have worked in the profession for the last 31 years. Today I want to talk to you about a child's right to play. In occupational therapy, occupations refer to the everyday activities that people do as individuals, within their families and as part of the wider community to occupy their time and bring meaning and purpose to their life. Occupations include things that people need to do and things that they want to do. So for example, we need to go to the toilet, but we might want to go and play a round of golf. But what does this mean for children? Children play as part of their daily lives and therefore for children, play is an integral part of their occupational performance. In the UK, children use bath time not purely as a time to manage their personal hygiene, but to learn through play. For example, bathing with a sibling allows us to learn the art of sharing, understanding another person's emotions, and allows us to imaginatively play. But if we look a little bit deeper into this, do we have the right to play? Children do have the right to play and the UK has signed up to the United Nations Conventions on the Rights for Children. This was signed in 1989 and Article 31 states that a child has a right to leisure, play and participation in cultural and artistic activities. By removing one aspect of play, which is integral to our culture or our cultural norms, we are not working within the spirit of the United Nations statement. So what are the benefits of play? Bathing enables a child to begin to learn the task of managing her own or his own personal hygiene. This could start with the basic, basic activity of washing our face and move on to a stepped approach of learning to wash your upper limb, your lower limb or your groin area. And it's crucial that we support this activity and it's important for a child's future and for their general health and well-being. Bathing also supports self-esteem. Being able to manage all or just a little part of our own personal hygiene is important for our self-esteem. It gives children an element of control over their lives, which is vital for their psychological well-being. Bathing also allows for respect of others and it helps us to develop our social skills. Sharing is a key skill to learn and bathing allows for children the opportunity for them to share with their siblings. This is particularly so in the smaller confines of a bath where there are the close proximities and restrictions of space which doesn't allow for separation. So we need to learn to work together. The other thing is, uh, that bathing does is the element of creativity and allows us our capacity to learn. Bathing allows a child to explore a whole new area of play. It assists with sensory integration through the sensation of water and brushes and sponges, enables a child to explore filling and emptying of vessels. You can use wind-up toys. Um, so not only are you learning how things work, but also you're using fine motor skills. We can also use um, the bath to uh, create different colours and different um, textures with bubbles, which all adds to a child's sensory processing skills. And really, we need to understand that bathing is fun and it's an excellent way of learning in a very relaxed environment. But it also allows a child to explore risk-taking can take small risks within a safe environment to teach a child how to manage their risks. And within bathing, it can be addressed as part of a child's skills. So it's learning or teaching them what they can do within the bath. Can they hold the, their breath underwater? Can they lie flat? Can they float? You can teach all these skills in a safe environment 
where you're in close proximity and you can guide them in what they're doing.